what's up my chatter boxes if you guys haven't done so already please please feel free to like comment and subscribe this is my review for love at the lockup season three episode 19 m-i-a fiance okay so let's just get right into it so it's one it starts off where it kind of left off with um sean and destiny where sean what was at the house because it's like the day after the situation with kelly and destiny so sean you know he said that he's been giving them both some kind of space or whatever like that because you know everybody was all you know everybody was all heated at at the restaurant but i'm still not feeling sean i don't like the way sean handled that last um um interaction between kelly and destiny i don't like when he was sitting up there telling sure um destiny when destiny said she would beat kelly up sean sitting up there saying um i know you would and i'll bail you out like he to me like you just like scum you're just like scum and it's and it's almost like he was picking destiny over his kids too he really was it wasn't almost he was anyway so the producers was there and everything like this so he said how she's not there he found the you know pregnancy stick well, he found that pregnancy um pack, but the stick was going. He was like, well, maybe that's what made her leave or whatever like that. He was like, it is a possibility that she may be pregnant. We wasn't using no protection. I'm just like, ew, he's grossing me out. Just the fact of me thinking about them, you know, doing a deal. So he said, you know, he's just going to go to work. You know, hopefully everything works out. We see Destiny and Destiny look like she's on some kind of binge or, you know, I mean, I ain't going to say she looked like she on the bench, but she looked like she definitely had a taste of something she shouldn't have been having. And Because Destiny talking about how she don't feel good. Now, we know that the pregnancy test came back negative, but she's still acting like, you know, something's not right with her. She calls her mom. Her mom tells her to go to the ER. She act like she don't want to go to the ER. So the producer end up, you know, um, taking the will because... She in there acting like she about to have a goddamn stroke or something. I don't know what the hell was going on with Destiny. But, child, she's a whole goddamn mess. And she said, I'm thinking about just running. She was like, I got his car. I got his credit card. And you know she got the ring, too. You know she got the ring. So, anyway, she was saying that she don't really handle, you know, pressure well. She normally just runs. She don't deal with her problems. You know, she know that he's been lying. She could tell by the interaction that he, that, you know, she seen between him and Kelly at the um, sit down. She was like, she don't want to deal with that shit. Like, she don't want to deal with it. And I'm looking like, bitch, well, this is what you signed up for. Like, you knew he had kids. Even though you might have not knew he had six kids, you knew he had kids. And you knew that someone was going to be in the picture. So, why are you trying to, you know, come in between it? Like, what are you so threatened for? You Are you threatened for people might really see who you truly are and get in his ear and be like, listen, she ain't good for you. She ain't nothing but trash, this and the other. I don't know what your mark is, but from word on the curve is, I mean, I don't know if it's true or not, but word on the curve is Destiny got five kids of her goddamn own. She got five kids of her own, and she got a nerve to sit up there and be mad at him because he's trying to be involved with his kid's life. Probably because she a deadbeat mom. She want him to be a deadbeat dad. I don't know. It's just weird. It's, it's just all the way weird to me. All the way weird. So she basically saying that she don't care, you know, if he forfeit on his uh, $50,000. She was like, he just had to deal with it. She was like, he's 45 years old. I'm 28 years old. He think he going to run circles on me. Oh, he ain't, he can't one up on me. I'm looking like, sis, chill the fuck out. Like, he really got a winner there, but that's on him. And he kind of deserve everything that Destiny about to dish out to him. He deserve every bit of it. Okay, now we're just going to go to Sarah, 12 Head, a.k.a. Michael. Well, Michael, a.k.a. 12 Head, and then my um, Malcolm. Child, 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 child. So, it starts off where we seen last, I think it was like one of that, like, sneak peek, where Michael is actually um going to going to Sarah's house with this, he, he is in, a, like, a bear costume, or whatever child he said he made up this character called mr blue when he was in prison but he wasn't able to get that um costume so he's gonna go with um mr bear blues ex um assistant so i'm like oh okay so he's on his way there and he was like listen I'm showing up. I'm going to be there for my kids. This is what he's telling, like, the um, producer and everything. He was like, and 
I don't know if Malcolm there, but if I was to him, I wouldn't be. Like, Michael, really? Michael has such a big ego. and But I'm going to tell you all where that ego come from. Because Sarah gives him the energy where he knows that she's still into him and he can play on her heartstrings. That's why he's so confident because she don't put her foot down when it comes to that one right there, okay? So we see Sarah, her, Malcolm, the kids is there. Malcolm, um, you know, asked her, did they, did he want, did she want him to go get some coffee and some bagels and some cookies and stuff for the kids? So she said, yeah, so he's on his way out. So he's in the car telling, telling the people that, the producers, that, you know, he got a feeling that Michael's going to come you know, to the house or whatever. And he didn't have like an easy feeling with the situation between Michael and Sarah. And he has every... He, he, what I'm going to say to you, Malcolm, believe your gut. Believe your gut. That's all I'm saying. Now, from what I'm hearing from, you know, people that pay attention to them and follow them on social media, they are still together. So I guess they were able to work through the things that they needed to work through. But he's out getting bagels. Now, Michael pulls up. He walked straight in her house. We won't skip the fact that the door wasn't locked. But even the fact that the door wasn't locked, he didn't even try to knock. He just came straight in there. And when he came in there, she didn't say nothing. And her confessional talking about summer. And her confessional, she's talking about she's furious at Michael and, and you know, all this nonsense. But you didn't check him from just barging in your house when you know you got your man. Child, child, child. So she just sitting there rocking the baby. Ariana, what, what, Aviana, that's the daughter name. She playing with Michael. They just having a good old time. She looking stuck on stupid when she in the confessional. Child, next thing you know, Malcolm, Malcolm comes back. Now, Malcolm gave me a little weird vibes, but he seemed like he's a nice guy. So we're not going, I'm not going to, um, be so hard on Mike Malcolm. I don't know his upbringing. We don't know much about him. But he do give me weird vibes. Anyway. He comes in there. He looking like a dead court in fucking headlights. Malcolm in there. I mean, uh, Michael in there playing with his kids. Sarah in there looking all crazy. So she did say to Malcolm that she was sorry for all this. So Malcolm trying to like hold conversations with um my you know Michael Michael ignoring him he paying him dust and I'm like oh my fucking god this shit is awkward as a mug okay it was awkward so they eventually so Sarah hold up before I even get to that point Sarah end up going to the bed Aviana go to the bed so Mike so Michael was saying how it, the costume was hot so but before all that. You could tell, like, Malcolm started walking back and forth because he didn't know, like, how to approach the situation because Malcolm, I mean, Michael was already ignoring him. So I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. So anyway, them two was able to sit down and have a conversation. And Mal Michael basically told him that he wasn't trying to make the party about me and him. He wanted to make it, you know, he wanted to keep it on his daughter. So they were talking and where it went wrong at because Malcolm going to sit up there and ask Michael about custody where I thought, now I ain't, I'm not no fan of Michael, but I don't, I just didn't think that that was Malcolm place to be asking Michael about the custody. You already know what the hell you need to know from Sarah, what she telling you. That's not your place to be questioning that man about his custody cases with his kids. That's that you was out of line with that, and that's why Michael got up and paid your ass dust because you was out of line. So anyway, Malcolm, Michael, he 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 leaves. He's so he's telling this um, producers was like, listen, he's he said anybody in Sarah' life is pretty much temporary. She he was she was like he said not she he said that. I'm her, her, um, that's my baby mom and technically still legally my wife. He was like, and if, if I want her, I can, I, I can get her. That's basically what he was saying. He was like, he control all the cards. And I'm like, see Sarah, if you watch this, cause maybe you didn't know how he was 
playing prior to because maybe you was too caught up in whatever you was caught up in. But if you didn't watch this and you didn't wake the hell up when you heard him say this, then I don't know what the hell to tell you. You just a lost goddamn cause because guess what? He would chow, chow, chow. And Michael with them stiff ass braids. And you got a nerve to be acting like you some guy dag on sex symbol or some, you know, guy gets the women. Child, did y'all see his mind shot? Because y'all know he just got locked up for child endangerment or something like that down in Miami. And I don't think it was with his kids because we all know Sarah ain't letting them kids go to Miami. Probably it was Maria kids because that's what Maria say. Child, please get out. Michael, go sit your ass down somewhere. So... Malcolm ended up pressing Sarah because he was a little upset. He was like, listen, what is this? You know, he was like, because you say that you don't care for him, you don't have no feelings for him, but you show too much emotion. Then she getting into her, you know, black girl scent. Uh, yeah, I, I only do this because of the guy. I forgot what the hell she was saying. I, I really, really do. I, I, she gets on my nerves sometimes with that. And... He was, you know, he was asking her, like, listen, you said that he cheated on you. You said that he brought another girl, you know, up here in front of your face. What am I, revenge? And she was like, no, I wouldn't play those games. And he was like, well, do you want to be in a situation with me? Um, am, am I too much for you? Or am I bringing air to stress? And she was like, I'm a big girl. I know what I'm doing. I'm like, in scene. Because every time she was, she was talking, it seemed like she was in character. I'm like... Baby girl, you is not about to get no acting role because you showing out on love at the lockup. So we're going to see how this turned out because Michael said that he's staying up there. So we're going to see. Child, that's the, that's all I got for them. That's all I got for them right there. Okay, we're just going to get Lindsay and Scott out the way. So it starts off with Lindsay. She's getting herself together because apparently she has a photo shoot because she's trying to do some modeling. <laughs> so she said she did modeling in the past. And they, you know, showed some of her pictures. And I'm like, interesting, interesting. I don't know what kind of editorial those pictures would have been posted on. But it was very interesting, <laughs> to say the very least. Anyway, so Scott was like, well, you sure that that's a good... um pay for you he was like because you're not you know i think he said like 16 or something like that she was like so they have modeling for people you know for people my age is you know it, it's a room it's it's a lane for me and scott really wasn't here for it so she was explaining how you know her and scott haven't really been on the same page with communication scott said he hasn't even been in the um you know sleeping in the room with her so apparently we thought that he had just snooped and read the um excerpts of the of, of her journal but apparently he been going in and out of her fucking um pockets and everything since you know he i guess started not really feeling her well trusting her so child we see them so they they end up going to the photo shoot Scott trying to do the manly thing or whatever like that. He asked the guy. He was like, well, let's give Lindsay some um, some privacy and we can go outside and talk. So he grilling the um, photographer, asking how he know Lindsay. Um, apparently, they know each other from, like, college and things like that. So he was like, um, you know, it was asking him questions and stuff like that. So he was answering them. So they went back in. So, Lindsay was like, oh, are you done? Like, she was giving him such a fucking attitude, but I get it. And she basically was telling him, it's not for you. Like, it's up to me. She wasn't really um, feeling what Scott was putting down, but I understood where Scott was coming from. He's just being protective. He's saying that's his future wife. <laughs> that's big. That's a big F. And he's trying to be, you know, um, protective of her. Now, that damn photo shoot was a hot-ass mess. She did her own goddamn going makeup. I don't know what the um outfits were. You know, some of the bathing suits didn't look too, too bad. But Lindsay looks a hot mess. They keep they was putting Lindsay on this pedestal. Like, Lindsay was so cute and she's so pretty. And instead of a... I back to differ. I back to differ. I'm not saying she but ugly. But she is... I beg to differ. That's all I'm going to say because I don't want to be on here tearing these women down. But beauty 
is definitely in the eye of the goddamn beholder, okay? It really is. Now, it seems like every time we turn around, Scott lip looking redder and redder and redder. So, she probably, you know, is a prize to him. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, listen. And that makeup, I don't know. It, now, I understood why her makeup looked like that when she was in jail. But it seemed like her makeup has not changed since she been out. And Tara Bell done bore her all uh, $200 and something dollars worth of makeup. And her shit still look like that. Like, come on, what's going on? Then we see, um, so, apparently... Lindsay was saying that she needed to be more independent because Scott was telling that she he wasn't really feeling it. She was saying how she needed to be real more independent because everything she do is everything she has is coming from him. And apparently he was supposed to have her, you know, keep the books and um the finances and stuff with his company, but he don't really trust her. So he ain't doing it. And my thing is, Scott, if you don't trust it, then you need to make a move. I wouldn't be keep having her up in there in my house with her, you know, kids getting closer and closer to me. If I got these, you know, doubts that I don't trust her. You know what I'm saying? Like, make a move. Do something. Be a man. Like, you know, be a man. Like, don't let that girl run all over you. And now she's sitting up there talking about Terrible got this camper that she need to be that she needs somewhere to park it in between where, you know, when she finds something per permanent. So she buddying, she, um, buttering, um, Scott up. He agreed to let Tara Bell park the goddamn camper on, on, in the driveway, not knowing that they going to be over in there blinking. You know what I'm saying? Right underneath his goddamn fucking nose. And he don't know shit. See, that's what I'm saying. Then she going to sit up there and say, if it's up to her, Tara Bell be sleeping in the same goddamn going bed. See, Lizzie is out of control. And I ain't really mad at her because you do what you do. And if you know, if he allowing you to do it, then so be it. But damn, like, come on. You playing a dangerous game with somebody, you know, helping you out with your goddamn kid. Like, see, that's, that's the main focus that you need to be worrying about. You worrying about getting your little cootie lit you need to be worrying about the stability for your child because when the, her child in, did go to camping but before, prior to that we seen her show her um her daughter the room is is um in the attic it was finally finished he had she had a nice little um you know led lights in there it was you know real girly like a little candy be trying to you know um drapery set up in there it was really cute and she also said that she know a lot of those things that she was she able to do for her daughter she wouldn't be able to do if it wasn't for Scott. So why would you put your do you and your daughter in a situation to be pushed back to your mom house, kicked back to your mom house, you know, just for the sake of this this messy shit you got going on with Terrible? Like, come on, make it make sense. But you know, hey, whatever, whatever, I whatever. So now we got Andrea and Lamar. So we we see Andrea first. She's in there with Priscilla. And y'all know, some names, you can't picture a kid with those names. Like, it's more of an adult name. So when I hear them keep calling her Priscilla, I'm expecting to see a grown lady. It is this little girl. But we all grow into our names. But that's just like a, a, a old, you know, like an older person name. Anyway, so they were um, in... I, Everybody is being homeschooled, I guess, because of the corona, or I don't know, because Andrea probably just don't want them in school in L.A. You know how she is. So, anyway, so they doing, like, these, this genealogy um, project where, you know, they learn their different heritage and things like that. So, apparently, Andrea is African. Like, her dad is full-blown African. And I'm like, uh, it kind of makes sense now. It kind of makes sense. Anyway, so... She is, um, you know, showing Priscilla, like, the African dance because she was saying that her dad used to dance with her. And, you know, they used to have fun. And she want Priscilla and other kids to learn, you know, they rich culture. She said she come from educated people. And she want her to learn. And I don't see nothing wrong with it. So as they're in their... Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. As they're in their... As they are in their doing, you know, the project... Now we hear this loud music. So they go, well, not they. Andrea goes in there and it's Lamar playing this loud music. So he, apparently he's trying to be a rapper. Like, give it up, bruh. 
Give it up. If you if you ain't come out with a deal, give it up. And I heard some of your music. It ain't that great. Give it up. Give it up. So she was saying, like, listen, that's all you in here doing this? She was like, well, he, so he said, well, this is how, you know, I uh, make my money. First of all, because I thought he had a job. Because you're not about to sit up there and tell me that this is your full-time job. That's not what you're about to tell me, Lamar. It's not. So she was saying, I need your help. I'm in here trying to help her with schoolwork. I got a girl get ready for work. I got to do meal prep for the rest of the week. Like she was running it down. So he was talking about, well, it seemed like you need a sister wife to help out with some of this other stuff going on. I'm like, now, Lamar, you sit your ass down. You ain't got nothing going on. So, because she, uh, she want him to help her, um, Priscilla, with the project. So he was telling us, you know, the producers and us, that it's a lot of pressure. All the kids got different schedules. You know, they move in all these different directions. It's a lot on them. It's stressful. And that's just life. That's just how, you know, we women adapt. Lamar, you was in, the, you know, locked down for so long. This is how the real world function. And you got a family. We all, the, A family is a whole bunch of different moving parts. That's how it is. So... Um, Andrea um ended up going to work. She looked pretty decent or whatever like that, cause like she um took re refreshed our memories that she is a real estate agent. So she's saying that um you know she had a couple, I guess um suitors to buy some house that she had to go meet up with. So she got herself together and she left out. So Priscilla and Lamar was doing the genealogy project and he pulled out his. You know, picture book. First, before that, he was showing her all like the tattoos that he had. It's a but it ain't nothing but a cemetery on his goddamn going body of a, 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 a cemetery. Bunch of dead people on his body. So he was telling her, you know, different people and how they got murdered and things like that. I it's just it was just sad and depressing. You know what I mean? But they in that street life. I think he crip or blood or what. I don't. I think he crip. So you know that's how that shit go. Anyway. Apparently, he was like, I got a secret. Apparently, the secret is Priscilla didn't know that she had another sister. So, Lamar, you know, we seen the sister and maybe like when we first was introduced to them when he came home, we seen his daughter. Apparently, Andrea got a problem with his daughter or, you know, intimidated by the fact that he got another daughter. Because you remember she had made a big fuss of meeting a baby mom and all this old stuff. She ain't want all that to go down. Andrea, baby, Andrea, baby, if you don't want to accept him and his kids, then you don't need him because you want him to accept your kids, your kids. What's the problem? And Lamar, if she not willing to accept your child, then let her hit the streets, kick, kick rocks. Fucking shit. What? What? Andrea, bad shit crazy. And then you sitting up there calling yourself a woman of God. A woman of God? Child, 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 child. Mm. Oh my God. So anyway, Priscilla, um, she was she was excited. She wanted to see her. You know, she wanted to meet her. So he ended up calling his daughter. Apparently, he was already supposed to meet up with his daughter. Now he's telling his daughter that Priscilla wants to meet up with her. And she was like, well, I thought it was just going to be me and you. She really don't want to meet Priscilla. Because she feels some type of way, I guess, how she feel like she is left on the outside looking in. And she don't want to be bothered with the situation. And, um, and Lamar was like, well, I'm trying my best to mend a broken relationship with you. I'm trying to, you know, keep things straight with my wife. You know, it's a lot of pressure on me. Lamar. Let me tell you something, and I know you might love your wife, and I know you probably want that relationship to work, but your your first responsibility is to that daughter that you missed so many years of her life. That's where your responsibility lies, to that daughter, okay? And you're going to have to move on her pace. If she don't want you to bring Priscilla there, don't bring Priscilla there, because you, you and her needs to fix whatever y'all got going on before you bring this little girl that's getting so much of your attention and your time see think about how she feel and that's what your daughter said think about how i might feel about all this situation so he was like what you don't want to meet her she was like listen i don't know i'll let you know and and that was the end of that conversation like like i listen andrea you piece of work you piece of you you ain't right you you piece of work you piece of shit lamar you probably need to toss her but you ain't got nothing going on for yourself that's probably why you keep her there i don't understand but it couldn't be me but to that daughter 
Take your time and don't be forced into nothing. And you, you, he owe you. It ain't the other way around. That's just how I feel about that. So now we got Brittany and Marcelino. It's Brittany Dirty Thirty. And her and all her little girl, all her crew, they there looking rough as I don't know. <laughs> I don't listen. I don't know if her friends is a little older than her or they're really the same age as she is, but they all just look rough. I guess from all the drug use and, you know, in and out of jail, don't be, they look rough, child. Ain't listen, they all had all these little tight fitting dresses and stuff. Child, listen, listen, guts all everywhere. But they was having fun. Dumb dances was taking me out. I'm like, now, I can't dance. I am a black girl. And I know y'all know the myth they say black people got rhythm. I am one black girl that do not got rhythm. But I know I can dance better than them heifers. Because they was looking a hot ass mess on that damn dance floor dancing. So, anyway, they were having, you know, a good old time until someone brought her her being Brittany the phone so her sister I forgot her sister name her sister had called to wish her a happy birthday and then she asked what well, did mom call you and wish you a happy birthday and that's when all like the, the dramatics came and she was like no and Brittany was saying that she just wanted to have fun and stuff like that child then she was talking to her friends and she was like listen I don't know what to do for my mom. I'm tired of trying you know it's been a month I haven't speak, spoken to her so her friend was like listen if that was my mom, I'll try a hundred, a thousand times to help her. Like there will be, there will be no limit as to how much I, you know, would try to help her. Because Brittany also said, like when she was in her predicament, she never, you know, did the things that her mom had done. And her friend said, "Well, I have. My family didn't even want me around." She was like, "So it's not always good to throw your, you know, your people to the the wayside." That's basically what she was saying to Brittany. So Brittany, you know, she was coming having like a coming to Jesus moment a little bit. So they all was about to go outside to go get, you know, st start smoking. So then she ran into her sister Kayla. I know they had to be doing this for the TV because shit just didn't like it didn't flow right. It didn't flow right. So. Brittany was telling her, yeah, you know, I'm dirty. She was like, I know, I know. And then Kayla said, well, how old were you when your um when mom took you to your first crack house? Something, something to that. Or when or when mom started having her problems, you started noticing her problems. And Kayla was like, I was five because mom took me to her crack house. And I'm like, why are y'all talking about this stuff at the party? Like some stuff just don't need to be talked about. This is how when people start drinking, they start. This is how shit be coming up in families. This is how fights be erupting. This is how. You, what is this being talked about for? Anyway, so Brittany was like, "I'm sorry you had to go through that. And I know you don't want to. Um, you chose a different path. You don't want to be like mom." And she told Brittany that she was embarrassed to her. At one point. And Brittany, I guess that just did something to Brittany. Brittany started crying. I'm sorry. You know, I just was trying to escape the pain. I didn't know how to handle it. And Kayla was saying to her, well, you know, you changed your life around now. You my role model. I told the people in college that you was my role model. It was just like, it was like way team too much for me. It really did. And to me, like... I, it just didn't, it, it just didn't fit. It just didn't flow. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. Anyway, so Marcelino got wind that, you know, Brittany was um crying. He was like, oh no, ain't no crying, no crying at no party. He was like, that's not what we doing. He said, you know, he put a lot of effort in trying to make this party as, as special as he possibly could for Brittany. So he was trying to break up, you know, the moment and make you know bring it you know bring it back to a happy occasion so he ended up throwing cake and britney hair now anybody else i mean y'all all drunk y'all in the house it ain't like y'all outside i don't see where it's to be a big deal you understand what i'm saying britney ended up taking it to the left a little bit was upset she was like he could have do it through it anywhere else my um my dress or anywhere else not my hair she said she paid a hundred dollars a hundred and thirty dollars to get her hair um washed out pressed out i said where where a hundred and thirty dollars where because that wasn't no hundred and thirty dollars hair and if it was a hundred and thirty dollar hair then maybe you need to go and ask for a refund because something wasn't right something wasn't right 
So they was washing the hair, you know, out um her hair in the bathroom. And she ended up calling Marcelino a bald head or something. And he got mad and flipped and stormed out the house talking about she's disrespectful. I ain't deserve that. And he was telling the um camera people to leave him alone. And I'm like, you got mad because she called you a bald, bald ass, whatever that she called you. And you're real, and you are a bald headed nigga. I, I don't know. I, I don't so you got mad at her for calling you something that you are. Make it make sense, Marcelino. That was all. It was, that that's all um, with Brittany and Marcelino. They wasn't really giving that much tease or whatever like that. But I just thought it was like certain conversations just didn't fit into the scenes to me. That's that, that's the way I took it. So now we got Quayla and Chevelle. So we see Chevelle. We gonna get this out the way real quick. Chevelle looks like she's somebody goddamn grandmom. Okay, she looks like somebody grand freaking mom. Okay. Anyway, so Chevelle then went through oh boy phone and his Facebook and Instagram um, DM and messages and stuff like that. So apparently, Quaylen has been a naughty boy. She ran across some text when the girl was like, you know, I can't wait for um for you to come back over to give me some of that big, big D something. She said to that effect. So... She was in a um confessional, you know, telling how she, she was upset and how, you know, um he, you know, been running game on her. They end up asking her what she was going to call the girl. So she called the girl back. The girl tried to act like she ain't know who Quaylen was at first. And then Chevelle started asking her, was you sending him money for his, on his books? Were you doing this? Were you doing that? And she was like, no. She was like, maybe, maybe. Like I would have like I probably would have wanted to jump through that phone. You be being a little smart ass, saying maybe, maybe. And she was like, "You stupid, cause you said that you're a liar. You're a liar, cause you say you didn't know him." And then, girl, Chevelle, like, come on. Then she said, "I get off my line, hell, bitch. You called her. You called her, Chevelle. She ain't called you." So how she was saying how she felt stupid. You know, her and um Quaylen was supposed to be getting married. Where was all this supposed to be coming from? That boy been in jail for 12 years. He went down when he was really young. Where was he supposed to get all this money to marry you? You know, marry you. How was he supposed to support you and your daughter? How? Make it make sense, Chevelle. Come on. Like, come on. You give very much desperate tease. Very much desperate tease. Anyway. And it looked like she moved. In between scenes, because at first it looked like she came out that house. You remember that she was living in that house. Now it looked like they live in an apartment complex. Then if y'all ain't noticed, one scene when she, her and um, Quaylen was talking inside the hallway, her braids was red. When she was running out after him, her braids was black. I'm like, oh my God, they did a lot of cutting and goddamn pasting on this damn episode. They really, really did. So Quaylen, Quaylen ended up calling her, um, calling her. He act like he don't know what the hell is going on. So now we see them. First of all, hold up, hold up. Did y'all see how after she had got all except because she would start throwing all his shit out the window. This before we found out what was going on. She was throwing his stuff out the window. Then she walks outside. She had these little shorts on. And I think it was like a little cheetah print shirt with these damn hips. <laughs> She remind me like she was reacting that Monica scene when Monica had them goddamn shoot them white big white shoes and then she gonna go sit with a curve, look like a big dummy. Let me tell you something. I'm not saying that I would not have been hurt, and I'm not laughing at your pain because that I that I don't wish that on nobody. But come on, go cry in the goddamn pillow. Yo on a goddamn curve like a act like a big damn dummy. Crying, kicking your damn shoes off. Girl, you all go sit your ass down. Come on. Like, come on. I don't know. I, I, it was a lot of bad acting on this episode. I think maybe, you know, Chevelle and um, what's Michael baby mom name? His wife. It'll come to me. I think those two probably trying to get an acting gig somewhere because they was giving me very much bad actress. Okay. Anyway. So she ended up. Uh, so now Quayla ended up coming to the apartment or whatever. They arguing. 
Quaylen looked like he writing down his rap because you know, I don't know if y'all follow him on Instagram or anything like that. He called himself a rapper too. And Quaylen used to was looking good when he was in his confessionals and stuff at jail when he first came home and all that. Now he looking like Master Goddamn Splinter. He look a goddamn mess. That's too much weed, alcohol, whatever he doing. I don't know, but he, he not looking good. He not looking good. But he wasn't even giving her the energy that she was trying to get from him. She kept on, you know, arguing with him, saying, you know, you did it. And he, you know, he did say he didn't do it, which we all know he full of fucking shit. You know what I'm saying? He full of fucking shit. And she was like, what man you know come from jail? Um, I, I, I held you down. Your friendship back. What man you know come from jail? They come home with some clothes, some shoes, and everything that I provided for you. Not too many. Well, that was on you, Chabelle. That was on you. That was on you. So, she ended up walking away. And he was like, you walk away from me. I walk out. She was like, do what you got to do. And so, she, in her confession, she me, we all know he going to come back. Well, we all know you going to let him come back. So, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? So, he ended up leaving. She run back after him. Talking about, yeah, keep going. Keep, 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 keep going. Keep going. Like, now, like I said, her braids done changed colors in between scenes. He ended up confessional telling the producer, I ain't cheat. Uh-uh. And couldn't keep the smirk off his goddamn on face. You know goddamn well you busted. You know you was cheating. And then he gonna say, she, she keeps saying, I had a whole bunch of girls in my phone. What, I'm supposed to have a bunch of guys in my phone? Um, You know, I was locked in with a whole bunch of guys. Why would I be having them in my phone? I'm like, oh my God, they damn must. So he basically saying that he needs to focus on himself. He's been locked in for 12 years. He... He trying to find himself. And I feel like Chevelle started of trying to smother him, trying to be his mom. Cause you even though you look like you could be his mom, you're you you're not his mother. I think just give him the space to do what he needs to do. Leave that boy alone. If he come back, he come back. If he don't, let him go. You look like you might be in a better position than what he is in. I let his ass go. For real. He wouldn't be bringing me all that extra stress. He just wouldn't. Not if he ain't bringing nothing to the goddamn table anyway. See, she was in there talking about how, you know, I brought him in. I, you know, I did all these things for him. My daughter, um, my daughter, you know, was open to him. She started calling him daddy. Well, you should have probably corrected her on that. That's not his fault that your child started calling him daddy. You should have told her that that's not your father. That's Mr. Quaylen or how, whatever y'all was going to call him. You should have set it straight. So a lot of stuff, th a lot of stuff that you're bring, bring um, that you're blaming Quaylen for, you kind of got to look in the mirror and blame yourself because you created a lot of this shit, and now you upset because it's going the other way. Like, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. That's all I had with them two. I, that's all I had. So last but not least, we got Shane and Lacey. So we see Shane and Lacey, that you know, they're in a bedroom and they talking about everything that's going on. So as, as we learned in previous episodes, we found out that Lacey was pregnant. They said that it was triples, um, you know, um, triplets, two identicals, um, and 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 one that was in a separate set. So they were talking because we also heard that Shane was saying how he was a little nervous because he can't afford to take care of all those kids because he had lost his job due to COVID. Now he's doing like a part-time or like a temporary job. And he said that his, you know, pay fluctuate depending on the gig that they give him. And Lacey was saying how they bought their house based on, you know, maybe just adding another kid. Then they got three kids, you know, then they got three kids coming plus the three she already got. She was like, and she ain't only 22. It's a lot. You know what I'm saying? So she was like, she don't know. She worried about, you know, if he able to handle all that because it's a lot of pressure. And I kind of worry too because that kind of shit that make you just run for the hills. You know what I'm saying? child now Lacey didn't look bad in the scenes like her face didn't look you know horrible or whatever like how i usually do but in them um confessionals she looked like she, i don't know if she got the lips bigger and she lost weight or the lips just bigger and they make it look like she lost it she looked weird weird Lacey, stay off stay off the botox like stay off the damn botox okay did you have them babies is it safe to get botox while you pregnant 
Like, or did the baby... Listen, 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 listen. Did the babies make your lip, lips grow more? Like, I don't know. I don't know what was going on. It, I don't know. So, Shane is able to go to the doctor's office um, and, and come into the visit this time because they lifted some of the restrictions due to the COVID. I think they was allowed to have, like, at least one visitor or one, you know, one person accompanying, accompanying them to the visit. So, they were going to go get the ultrasound. And when she got the ultrasound, the doctor, you know, wanted to speak to them because apparently they lost the twins. There was no movement with the twins um no heartbeat or anything like that so you know unfortunately those babies aren't going to come you know to term but luckily the same you know the, the, the baby that was in a separate sack is doing excellent doing wonderful so they are going to have another you know they are going to it looks like they're going to have a successful pre pregnancy but you know my heart goes out to them for you know losing you know the trip the, the twins but, you know, I think I can't help to think that Shane felt some kind of relief based on the fact that he couldn't afford three babies. You know what I'm saying? Like, and like he said, he don't know what Lacey going through because Lacey the one carrying him. He just here trying to support her. You know, he was like, you know, so he can imagine all the things that she must be going through. But I think he was a little bit relieved, too. You know, Shane was a little bit relieved. He was. So when she was asking, well, how you know, how you feel? He like, I don't know. I feel, I, I feel happy and sad all the same time. I don't know. I ain't never know you could feel happy and sad, sad in the same time. Like, I'm looking like Shane was dumb <laughs> He was dumb, 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 dumb. So they wasn't really giving much um, in this episode. That's all, you know, that, that was really the, the the gist of what they had going on, talking about their finances. And, you know, that they and they lost the twins, which was sad. But I, like I said, I, I can't help the, but to think Shane was a little relieved by that. And, but Lacey was saying, even though they were so early and, you know, it still, you know, was a hard, you know, a hard piece a hard pill to swallow losing those babies and you know we we're mothers we're you know we feel it they're inside of us so of course we're gonna feel it you know what i'm saying my heart goes out to them i, I really you know, it really does so that's all i had for this episode it was really really too long it's y'all don't even know how many times i watched this episode because it was extremely too long anyway that's all i got if you guys like the content please feel free to like comment subscribe and don't forget to highlight your girl. Bye.